Hello, beautiful. I'm jumping in after a podcast discovery call today with another beautiful lady. I really, truly hope that you are enjoying these discovery calls, really connecting with some of the hidden factors that are contributing to your fertility issues. Remember, if you would like your own discovery call, you can book a private one or you can jump on the email list and... um, get a spot when I call out for new members or new guests, I should say. But this podcast discovery call was a little bit different um, in the sense that a this beautiful woman had two children already. One via kind of natural but um, pushed with Clomid or produce help, you know, help ovulation with Clomid. And then the second one was IVF. IVF alongside, she said, and you guys, I'm going to play you this clip after, um, all the cocktails of drugs she could possibly have had, including immune suppressing drugs. Um, Her big um, red flag was reoccurring miscarriages, Um, several, like not several, like a lot. Um, And through her journey, she gained some kind of a conscious awareness of the term inflammation. She realized when her son was born that he had a lot of high inflammation. And we didn't dig into the nitty gritty of how she saw that or where she got this knowledge from. But um, her son is dealing with a lot of health issues. Um, And it breaks my heart obviously, this is like, one of the reasons I got into health coaching was if you guys don't know, I was in early education, um, in various different forms, like pretty much my whole life. Um, It was a passion of mine still is children are a major focus in my life. Um, And when I was discovering all this for myself, I thought I was going to take my new knowledge. Um, I had a special interest in special needs children, and I was going to help children with special needs um, change, you know, help improve their situations through their diet and their lifestyle. I decided I didn't want to do that anymore because I didn't want to work with parents. Um, It is a lot to take on, as you guys know, just to do it for yourself, but to to do it for your children as much as everyone says I would die for my children. Um, A lot of people won't even choose to live a healthy life for their children, for themselves and their children. Um, Not because I don't think they, for various reasons, right? I'm not being harsh. It's just the truth. It's too hard. They don't have the knowledge. They don't have the right support. They may not have the financial means. There's lots of reasons. It's like no judgment. It's just the truth. It's a harsh, harsh truth. So when I got pregnant naturally and I was, you know, just allowing the whole, my whole world to shift that this reality was like even happening, um, I decided that I did want to go into a kind of health coaching role for women with fertility issues, which wasn't a thing back then. Uh, We're talking about six, seven years ago. There were a small handful of us doing it um, on the internet. (laughs) Um, And obviously you still had um, doctors and nurses and acupuncturists um, and other professionals um, focusing, having a focus on fertility, but health coaching per se just wasn't really a thing like it is now. Um. It was my way to support the child because when I started learning about epigenetics and how important the development of the egg before it even meets sperm was to longevity, to a long, happy life, um, that really spurred me on to be able to do some of the hard things that I had to continue showing up for myself, even though I wasn't seeing the evidence. I wasn't getting pregnant. Um, I was still having miscarriages, things like that. Um, But I knew in the back of my mind that this was so important to keep up a certain level to the best of my ability to help negate any long-term health issues. 
Because the fact of the matter is, is we're all showing up in this world and there's so much chemicals and there's like so much stress and there's so much all this EMFs, all this kind of stuff that we're not going to be able to control everything. So we are all going to have to have um, a certain level of awareness of what we can control and what we can control. And hopefully the things that we can control are negating the things we can't control. But the health of you before you even ovulate, I cannot stress enough. I can't articulate enough unless you go out and read the studies of epigenetics that it's just so important. And the fact of the matter is that we are now into hundreds of years of our genetics just being dumbed down due to um, man just kind of meddling in um, places that they shouldn't be and us being exposed to toxins um, just on an overwhelming level. Um, yeah, it's really bad now, but the more I like look into it and the more I hear, I mean, it's not always being like super good either. You know, you've, we've had two huge world wars, um, you know, the, um, the, the snake oil generation where it, we didn't know what we were taking. Someone just said, oh, here, this is really good for this. And you just took it and you didn't even really know what the ingredients was. You weren't even really, you weren't protected. Now you're probably overprotected and obviously you're oversold um, medications and even supplementation. Um, so we are into, you know, multiple generations of our genetics just slowly being dumbed down and dumbed down and dumbed down. And this is why we're seeing record levels of um, our children being sick, women going into early menopause, women never even showing up with a period, um, major sperm issues, major, major sperm issues not talked about enough. Um, and why we're having all these crazy autoimmune disease and um, diabetes. There's just, the evidence is just out there in our society. Like you literally do not even need a scientific study to prove this. <laughs> just look around. Just open your eyes and look around. It's hard for me. There's a fine line I know I have to walk with educating people about taking care of their health to negate um, major health issues for our children. I think over on the CDC website, it says like one in 36 children now have autism. Like it's off the Richter scale. And, you know, that's, and autism obviously has a major spectrum. Um, but we're like, let's just even like slow it down with asthma, allergies, food sensitivities, gut health issues. And we are thinking so far ahead, we just want that baby. And we're not thinking the impact that our bodies can have on our future children's health um, because it's not talked about enough. So I was very honored that... Um, this woman was willing and to share her story and to recognize, not in a blaming way, but just in a like, oh, shit, this really impacted my child's health. And I wanted to play you guys this specific clip um, from the podcast discovery call. If you want to listen to the whole thing, the link is in the bio. But she realized in her journey of forcing her body to do something that it was telling her she could not do, that it not only kept putting a really major physical impact on her own body and her own chances because she wants a third, um, but on her second child's health. And I want to say this too, nothing set in stone, right? We random shit happens all the time you cannot control everything this is not what i'm saying this is not perfection this is not saying you have to be a certain way it's just gaining the knowledge for your body what are the things that you can control to decrease your chances because the studies are out as well ivf babies are 30 percent more likely to have health issues including including low birth weight um, autism, ADHD, 
food sensitivities, autoimmune, you know, all these things. And my belief is it's not because of the procedure them itself. It's because we are pushing the body to do something that it is incapable of doing because it doesn't have enough energy. It is in survival mode. And when you push your body to do something in survival mode, what is it able, what does it have to not only keep you alive, but to grow another human being? I mean, really, truly think about growing another human being, everything, its brain, its heart, um, its gut, its digestive tract, everything. There's so much to it. It's so important. And this will really help you make some of those hard decisions in your life when you're feeling time poor, when you feel, you know, that, um, yeah, just when you're feeling time poor and you just want to push it, that taking a minimum of three months, but up to six to nine months to just massively improve your own health and well being, your like you think of it as like you are the flower pot and your baby is that little seed and you got to tend to that garden before that seed shows up and how much better off everything will be for you how much you can maximize your chances of having a healthy pregnancy a healthy delivery a healthy postpartum it does not stop after the two pink lines i'm telling you right now it just gets harder so if you can show up for yourself now, you are setting yourself up. You are literally gaining time back. Once the science catch up, catches up, I mean, the science is out there. Once people start reading the science and putting it into play, it's all due to your cellular health. You literally get time back. You literally get your fertility back when you massively take the time to boost your cellular health and surrender to the process. You guys are all here showing up for yourself so hard so hard you're showing up so hard you have that deep innate belief in yourself in your body and even though you maybe have down days and you get on yourself I'm telling you if you didn't you wouldn't be here you would be like this chick is like cray cray she don't know what she's talking about she ain't no medical professional so you guys are here you're listening to this you're taking the steps so know that that was be put in your heart for a reason this drive to gain this knowledge to show continually show up for yourself was put there for a reason so the baby is coming but you have to surrender to the process and take the time to heal okay that's enough of me ranting and raving I'm gonna share the clip I really hope it's inspirational um, to your own journey to help you make some of the bigger decisions that are coming up the clinics opened and you know I was basically recovering from my miscarriage so I wasn't able to do the transfer until August so they had done the retrieval in January and I finally got to do my transfer in August and I just said give me the kitchen sink pro protocol give me everything. The doctor didn't agree with my decision. She was like, well, you've been pregnant naturally before. You didn't need all of that. And I said, well, I'm not taking any risks. I'm not taking chances. Just give me everything you got. And they literally did. I was doing progesterone in oil, progesterone suppositories. I was taking aspirin. I was doing blood thinners. I was I, all of it, intralipid infusions. I did it all. And I got pregnant and baby stuck. And I gave birth to a healthy baby. I had a C-section. Uh, but one thing I did notice when the baby was born is that he was inflamed. I could see um, that he had inflammation. And luckily, I had been watching a lot of videos. I'm a religious person, so I felt like the Holy Spirit was speaking to me and telling me, do not vaccinate your son. So I did not. And thank God I didn't because he did have a host of inflammatory issues, including eczema, um, contact dermatitis, what else, viral induced asthma, food allergies, food sensitivities. So he has run the gamut of health issues and it has been an ongoing um, issue. And so the more that I've learned about inflammation, 
the more I realized, okay, maybe I was inflamed. My baby was inflamed. And that's also probably why I have poor egg quality, probably why I'm having miscarriages. So 